Everybody knows you gotta have a good game boat side when you come up to Canada. I struggled for years. In fact, I'm just gonna be brutally honest. I sucked at figure eights. How many of you guys can relate to that? Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back into another video. Glenn McDonald with 54 Bust. And today I wanna to talk about figure eights. Everybody knows how important a figure eight is in musky fishing. And a lot of people, we all start out, we think we're doing a good job at it, and it turns out we're not. It takes a long time to get good at figure eights, and it takes a long time to gain confidence in figure eights. And the only way you're going to get better at it is to practice it. It is a practice skill. You have to get on water. You have to be where there's lots of fish, where you can contact them and get a lot of fish moving in the figure eights. It's the only way you're going to get better at it. Today we're going to talk about a lot of the common mistakes that everybody makes, including us, because we're going to show you our mistakes right out on the water. And even after all the years of musky fishing, we still fall into the same traps of whether it's a lazy figure eight at the side of the boat or a late fish coming in. And sometimes you do everything right and the fish still doesn't hit. It's just musky fishing. That's how it goes. So we're going to start with some of the common mistakes and we're going to start right now. All right, in this clip, I'm reeling in, I almost pulled my lure out, and I see oh, yeah. a late, late follow. I think the fish actually takes a little bit of a swipe at my lure when I kind of get it back engaged in the water. But at that point, you're just kind of hoping that something's going to happen. Here we are in slow motion. I'm pulling it in. I don't see anything. You can actually see I'm looking a little bit too tight to my lure. I almost pull it out right there, and there, the green arrow shows where the fish is. The fish actually oh, turns yeah. towards my lure but I don't really have an angle on it. And if I pause it right there, you can see that I'm trying to get my lure back into the water and you can see where the fish is. And a split second later, the fish actually makes a turn towards my lure. And at that point, guys, it's a guessing game on whether you can get that fish re-engaged, but that's probably the most common mistake I see so many people make and even some of the best anglers that are on TV, on YouTube, and, and guides that you're going to fish with, they've all made these mistakes because you get a little bit complacent. And in musky fishing, it's hours of boredom and just split seconds of pandemonium. And in this case, I was just being lazy. And there's really, there's no excuse for it. And I think everybody out there can relate to this common mistake. All right, here we are up on Cedar Lake. Dave's reeling in, and he doesn't see anything at first. And right there, he almost brings his lure out of the water, and a fish just kind of appears out of the deep. I wouldn't call that a late follow as just a fish that kind of showed up out of nowhere. And again, Dave kind of rolls around, and you're expecting something. Here you are in slow motion. I'm going to pause it right here. And if I pause it there... Dave has actually pulled his lure out of the water and now he's trying to get his lure back in because his fish starts to come up out of the deep. The red arrow is the fish's movement towards Dave's lure. The green arrow is Dave's lure kind of pulling away from the fish. And we'll kind of let this run ahead here. Dave turns and I pause it here again. And now Dave's lure is going back to his left and the fish is actually turning to its left and at this moment the fish is almost on the lure but look how stretched out Dave is I mean what would he actually do if that fish hit at this point he's so out of position he would have no leverage for a hook set and again it's just it's one of those mistakes that you'd like to have a second chance at see the fish just barely misses it now Dave tries to go around again and I think actually on this second turn the fish takes a deep swipe at it but it, again, it's a guessing game at that point. So those couple mistakes are pretty obvious. It's that late follow and it's the deep fish that just shows up out of the blue. And it's one that if you just make a conscious effort to at least make half a turn or do one figure eight on every cast, you're going to have a better chance at. And I know that's easier said than done. Okay, in this clip, I'm fishing with Hunter. Hunter actually has a fish moving and it peels off and I see it and I throw my lure in the water actually get oh, it to hit and it's on and off so fast that i just don't have much of a, a chance to do anything with it now if i slow this down you'll see kind of what goes wrong here 
My lure's out of the water. I see the fish, I throw my lure back in, I turn, I actually get it to hit in the first turn. You can see it's hooked up, it does a little head thrash and it's off. Now, in real time, there's probably not much more I could do with that, but if I pause it here, right here, you're gonna see that the fish is moving to my left. My rod is actually on the outside of the fish. The lure is T-boned in its mouth. You can see the direction of the lure. The green arrow is up towards my line. It's almost a perfect position for the hook in the fish's mouth. It's almost T-boned. I'm gonna pull back to my right. And at that point, run it ahead. And here's what happens in the next frame. That fish rolls to its right as I'm trying to set the hook to my right and the fish essentially spits the hook. The only thing different I could have possibly did in that position is instead of pulling to my right, is pulled down into me, and I would have drove that hook back into the fish's face. But again, in real time, it doesn't look like I had much time to think of anything else to do. Here we are in Cedar, and this is one that happens so fast. There is. The fish grabs it, and it's on and off so fast, I just barely have time. Here we are in slow motion. I'm gonna pause it right here. And at this point, you can see I have almost textbook positioning. You can see part of the lure out the right side of the fish's mouth, the dangle blade out the left, the fish is rolling away from me, and I'm trying to set into the right-hand side of the fish's mouth. We're gonna let this run ahead here a little bit, and you'll see what happens. The fish crashes, I pause it again, and as that fish thrashes to its left and back to its right, I'm trying to hook set at the same moment and it essentially just spits the hook right out. The only thing I could have did different if I pause it here on the same frame is I could have tried to pull down to my left to dry, try and drive that hook back into the fish's face. But again, in real time, that is just so hard to do and we'll just let it run out here and it's another one of those things in real time it's so hard to make the right decision and it's easy to look back on video but the nice thing about having video like this is that we can go back and we can see some of these mistakes and we can try to adjust the next time we're out on the water and by learning from our mistakes we can be better at it as we move forward all right, up to this point, it's been, you know, most of the common mistakes that we see. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. I know I certainly can because we're making these mistakes. And this is in the summer of 2021, and we're still making these mistakes. So it's not something that you fix wholeheartedly. It's just an ongoing thing. We always try to fix these mistakes as we're going. And now in the second half, we're going to start looking at the ways that we actually do the right things in the figure eight and how we get these fish hooked up. And in our estimation, the best way to do that is to almost always try and set the hook back into the fish's face. And you're going to see that in these next couple clips. All right, in this clip, I'm fishing with Hunter and you can see I got a fish following pretty tight to my lure. I do a big swing to the right. Come around on my oval, you see the fish's tail there. I swing out into an eight, and right there the fish comes up by the trolling motor, and I get a good hook set. And we're gonna break this down as I go into slow motion. We'll just let Hunter get it in the net here. And this is the first fish Hunter and I ever caught together, so we're pretty excited. And now here we are in slow motion, and you can see the fish is pretty tight to my lure. You see me lean in to keep that lure down. I take a big swing out to the right, I give that fish lots of room. I'm just going to do an oval on my first turn. As I come back to the windshield, you'll see my lure spin, and then you'll see the fish's tail. Now, I go out into the figure eight, and the fish stays tight to the boat. It slightly throws me off, but at this point, I see that the fish is coming out from the trolling motor, and the red line represents where the fish is going, and I had the forethought of setting the hook back into my body when that fish met me. We got a really solid hook set, and that's pretty much as good as you're gonna see a hook set in a figure eight by throwing that lure back into the fish's face. Yeah. Right here, I'm fishing with my buddies, Matt and Ron. Matt's got a fish coming in. He takes a hard swing to his right. That fish meets him. Matt just gets a classic hook set and a few seconds later we got a fish in the bag. Here we're going to break it down in slow motion. 
Matt does a loop out to his right that fishes hard on it and actually kind of right at that moment where I pause it, the fish is actually hitting the lure. Matt's pulling the lure to his left and that fish is making a hard swing to its left. We're going to let it run ahead a little bit here and right there, that's as good of a hook set as you're ever going to get. That fish is moving in the direction of the red arrow to the left and Matt makes a hard hook set to the right and that's about as good as it's going to get again with that setting back into the face of the fish solid hook set we get some head shakes here and i go for the net and we got a nice evening fish in the bag this clip here is a couple really cool things that go on. First off is that Dave and I both seen that it was a pretty big fish. I give this fish lots of room. It hits me on the outside of the turn. I get a solid hook set. It's hooked really good. Dave grabs the net. We come around and because it's a big fish, we know we're not going to horse it. We're going to try and let that fish kind of dictate the battle to some degree. And we're able to get it up in the net here without too much trouble. But as we break this down in slow motion, there's a couple things I want to point out. So first off is we seen that it was a pretty good sized fish. In this case, it was a four footer. That turn's not real big, but that fish is hard on it. I actually take a step to the front and with a 10 foot rod, I give that fish lots of room. It meets me in that turn, hits, and then I pull back with a solid hook set back into the base of the fish. And again, for us, that's kind of the textbook way of getting a hook set. And I'm gonna pause it right at the moment of the hook set here. And if I pause it right there, you can see the fish is moving out to the left of the screen and the position of my rod. As I feel pressure, I start to turn back into the face of the fish and you can actually see the zigzag that my rod makes as it loads up. And at that point, I have that fish hooked up solid. And again, we, a few seconds later, we got it in the bag, but that's the kind of hook sets that we like to see in a figure eight, especially when they hit on those outside of those turns. All right, this clip is slightly different because this fish hits right there in the outside of the first turn. Look at that violent head shakes. Just love that kind of stuff. I keep the fish down low. Dave's there super quick with the net. And that's probably as easy as it gets for a figure eight fish. And we'll go down in slow motion and you'll see that that fish is coming in hard and fast. And as I turn, I just let that lure hang right there just a second. That fish hits it and it thrashes its head to the left and it pretty much sets itself. Because in those positions when those fish come in and they hit in the first turn... They have so much momentum that if they grab the hook, most cases they're going to set themselves and you're just not going to have to do a whole lot extra when they hit in that first turn. Looking back on a few of the things that we did right there, I think in most cases when we are getting solid hook sets on fish, we like to try and set back into the fish. I know some people will do things a little bit differently, but when we can execute that well we almost always get a fish in the bag but you know what it's musky fishing and there's times where it doesn't matter what you do they're just not going to get hooked up here's a clip that kyla does absolutely everything right does a big first turn this fish is right on her lure she's got a crankbait the fish is right there she rolls around does another outside turn pauses it a bit that fish is chasing it hard it's right on it here she gives it a little bit of a depth change by going down she comes around and she hangs the lure that fish grabs it she sets right back into the face and that fish gets off but you know what you can't win them all and even sometimes when you do absolutely everything right it's a musky and it's going to do musky stuff and it's just going to get off you're not going to win every single battle Figure eights only lost a couple seconds and are won and lost in just mere inches in the water. And it takes practice. It takes practice to get good at it. It takes practice to have confidence in it. And I think what we just showed you guys is like, even guys that are as diehard as we are and guys that are way better than us, we all make mistakes. So don't get discouraged on the water if you lose some fish in the figure eight. It will come with time. Just keep practicing it and try and make your moves in the figure eight deliberate. Don't panic. Don't get too excited. And it will happen for you. And just know that sometimes even when you do all the right moves, 
It's just not going to work out for you sometimes, but hopefully by watching videos like this and others, that it will help you and you will gain more confidence confidence in the figure eight. And when you come up to Canada and you want to fish a lake like Eagle, you're going to be prepared for that battle that's going to happen at the side of the boat on a fish of a lifetime. For now, 54 bust is out of here and we're going to catch you guys out on the water later.